Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today with our sponsor Ada Lai, I want to explore adding color to a deep rich natural brown color of wool. Now I love natural colors of wool. It, they're some of my favorites to knit with and I use them a lot personally. However, there could be times when you might have a lot of this beautiful rich brown in your stash and you just might want another color to knit with. So that is why we're going to explore over dyeing this today. It's not to say that this color isn't beautiful because I think it's an amazing color, but um, I'm, we're curious about over dyeing this color and seeing, you know, is food coloring enough to get bring some other colors to it? Or what? I have over dyed this color technically in the Lion brand um, Fisherman's Wool where some of the plies have been this kind of dark um, warm brown but since it had lighter plies in there as well it was a little hard to notice how much color the darker brown took up. In addition to the full skein of yarn I have some remnants which we can use to do some swatch tests. Uh, so that way we can see, will food coloring cover this yarn at all, or is it going to be way too subtle? Um, and this will give us a starting point of something to explore, so we can dye this yarn. This yarn is 100% Romline lamb's wool, and is from Prado de Lana. You can see their website um, right there, and I'll put a link in the video description. And amazingly enough, either the sheep that this wool came from or just the colorway of this yarn is Ada, which goes great along with our sponsor of today's video. From just touching this wool, I can feel that it has a fair amount of lanolin in it. And there's two different things that we could do to, um, as we approach this for dyeing it. One is just patience. We can be really patient while we're dyeing because it will take longer for colors to absorb or we could try scouring the yarn first, um, sort of washing it with some soap to remove some of the oils to make it easier for the yarn to absorb color. Um, but with these swatch tests, I'm just going to go for it and we're gonna see what happens. I have four bowls of water here and each of them has half a cup of just plain tap water. And I am going to let my little six inch snips of this yarn soak for um, at least half an hour. Using the Wilton Colorite Performance Color System, we are going to do some swatch tests. Um, you know, snip tests? Yeah, snip tests. Um, I'm going to put one drop of the base blue into one container one drop of black into another, one drop of pink into the third, and then one drop of crimson into the last one. Now the base crimson is just red number 40, the base pink is just red number 3, the blue is just blue number 1, and the black is a mixture. So now let's mix all these up. That is a fair amount of dye in each of these. Um, the proportion of when I dye the full skein would not be the same as the proportions that we have in these bowls, but what this is going to do is tell me um, can we get a hue that we can recognize on the yarn. Next I'm going to add a teaspoon of white vinegar to each bowl, approximately. This is again a pretty high concentration of acid, but you know, we'll get what we get. The one to worry about is the pink that some of those red number threes will start crashing out. And now I am going to go and microwave each of these. I think I'm going to start with the two reds. I'm going to place them in the microwave and microwave until the I start seeing the water bubble. The time to simmer for me was about four minutes. And as you can see, these colors haven't really cleared, except for maybe the pink and the black. Can't really see the yarn at all right now. 
things are still really hot and I want to let the yarn cool completely in these various dye baths. Now, the goal of this is not to get the dye bath to clear. One drop of food coloring with so little fiber is a lot. But I want to see if I can see these different shades on these small pieces of yarn when I rinse them out and you know because maybe we won't be able to tell if we get a lot of color until it's dry maybe we'll be able to tell while it's wet either way um, I'm gonna let these cool completely and then we will take them out and wash them okay we have cooled off it's a little surprise that the red number three bound almost completely and I'm just quickly rinsing that off and yeah I would say that this definitely looks like it took some color. It is looking a lot redder to me, but I am going to want to see what it looks like dry. Let's take a look at our, this is our red 40. And again, you know, there is a tiny bit of bleeding, but I definitely do also look like I see some nice reds in there. The two actually look really, really similar, which is one of the reasons why I want to make sure to let it dry before we come up with our plan for the yarn. Next, let's look at the blue. Now, typically, blues bind a lot slower to wool, which is why we see so much more left in the bowl, but um, and this time, at least to me, it is more obvious than the last one that we definitely have some blue tones in here. Um, you know, if we compare these, you can see that there is a color difference. Now, how vibrant those are, that's going to be the question. But there's no question that these are looking different from one another. And that is what we really wanted to see. Last but not least, the black. Which, actually right now, that black is looking fairly black. Okay, our swatch tests determined that yes, we can over dye this, um, and it can be distinguishably over dyed. But, before we decide how to proceed, I do want to let these snips dry, so that way I can compare them back to the original color to determine how I actually want to over dye this yarn. So far I think the food coloring worked great. If I was really unable to determine if any color had bound at all then I was going to move on and do some tests with some commercial dyes but I think that uh, we might be able to play around with some of our favorite food coloring techniques. Wow. You know, it was a little hard to tell when wet um, if this yarn took up, how, you know, how much color it took up. But actually in all of these little snips, we got some gorgeous, deep, saturated colors. Um, we've got the base pink, base red, base blue, and then base black. And they all look really, really fantastic. So. I think basically anything is fair game. All four of these colors worked great. So yeah, let's think about dyeing this yarn. Now we're going to get ready to dip dye this beautiful Ada yarn in some Wilton's Violet food coloring. I think it's going to work great because we look at our pink and our blue and they both really show up. And I think that it will really transform this yarn into feeling like something else. And, not to mention, it'll give a new dimension to our Broken Violet colorway that we know so well. Because of the lanolin content in this yarn, I'm expecting it might take a little longer to absorb the color, but I'm not planning on trying to scour it to remove any of the oils. Instead, I'm just going to pre-soak this for half an hour to an hour to make sure the fibers are really saturated before we start dyeing. In our dye bath, I have eight cups of water. Whoops. Plus over one tablespoon of white vinegar. I tend to aim for about one, but you need at least two, maybe three in the end for the blues to bind. 
at least the wool of the Andes base. So let's just say we're starting at one and a half tablespoons. I am now going to mix one half of a teaspoon of the Wilton, Wilton's Violet icing color. There we go, it's a generous half teaspoon into half a cup of warm water. I like to pre-mix the color because it can take a little bit of time for it to dissolve, um, but having the warm water definitely, definitely helps. And we will add this dye to our dye bath immediately before we are ready to start dip dyeing. I'm hoping that we will see some good color payoff, but let's pour in our violet, quickly give it a stir, and then we are immediately going to start dip dyeing. And one big reason for the immediate dip is that you see that pink halo around the top, that's some of those red number threes, and they can crash out with acid. And so we don't want them to crash out. We want them to bind our pretty, pretty yarn. And of course, I don't have my tongs handy, but look at that runoff. So the runoff is looking blue, but I know that we are not, we've definitely still got red in there. Um, it's not until you really start seeing like blue on the yarn, aha, uh -huh, that's looking purpler. I do want to make sure there's some blue at the end. You can go too fast and not really get the blue. You want those reds to really absorb. But it looks like the blues aren't quite striking yet because if I sort of dip the yarn in, it starts to look a little blue. But then once I pick it up, that blue sort of drains away. I mean, that is looking fairly blue. Let's see if we're getting any more pink. All right, I'm gonna set that and grab the tongs. I wanna be careful. I definitely don't wanna burn anything. Um, this will help us sort of give a good poke in. Yeah, so it's getting bluer and bluer and I'm looking for not seeing a lot of pinks to come up in these last sections. So I'm giving that a little bit and yeah, I think that we, we are at in the blue stage that we've got a good broken color. I am gonna go ahead and leave this in the pot for five minutes before we add some more vinegar. This will give some blue time to reach some of these places and then we'll come back. Five minutes are up. And I need to reduce that heat even more. Let's take a peek. Oh yeah, we've got a lot of blue in here. I don't want to move it around too, too much. Especially because these fibers already showed that they were a little sticky to each other. But let's add some more vinegar. One, two, three more tablespoons, basically for good measure. Now things are all pretty dark so it's a little hard to see but ooh, that is pretty, pretty, pretty. Basically just picking it up and moving it in so that way we could distribute the vinegar a bit. But I'm gonna let this go just below a simmer with the heat on really low for 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes and that is looking so much clearer. I am gonna turn off the heat completely and let the yarn cool off in the pot. That way, if there is a little more blue, it gives it some time to bind, but I also don't wanna shock the fibers and um, risk felting Ada's beautiful, beautiful yarn. All right, here is Ada's yarn that we transformed. We've got almost like a burgundy and a navy. Um, maybe even a teal at the other end. But you can see that our dye bath is completely clear. I wonder if the colors are gonna be, continue to be this dark or if it will intensify a bit 
want the yarn dries, but I think it's gorgeous. And we've certainly transformed the brown. Um, I'm gonna use a tiny bit of some dish soap just to make sure everything is rinsed out, but we're seeing no bleeding. I am taking care to be extra, extra careful because I do not want to felt the fiber, but you know, it is, you know, feels to me just the same as it did before. And I am not seeing any bleeding. So I'm gonna gently rinse out the soap, hang Ada's yarn up to dry, and then come back so we can see how much we transformed this yarn. Ada, this yarn is a true rustic masterpiece. I didn't even see this little piece of hay or whatever it is, grass, in it until I was laying it out just now. Um, so I think that it is kind of awesome how rustic and straight from the sheep this really does feel. I know that you had a lot of this yarn and you were really excited to have me transform some of the color and I think that we got something that really is not what I expected. We have this deep maroon burgundy that goes into almost like a deep teal, maybe leaning a little green, but this is so, so different from that original brown that we started with. If I zoom in on our original snips, the just blue and just pink gave us something that is a little brighter. And so maybe the violet color has a lot more of the red number three in it than our one drop of pink, but also a lot less blue. Because I think if I had added a lot more blue in the end, um, the bluer end would feel a little less teal and a bit more blue. So it's really cool how two colors that really when broken apart you do feel this difference and well I guess I suppose the one end technically has blue in it as well but it's just fun to see that it is very different broken apart than they were sort of as separate parts but either way we were able to cover up this original brown and transform it into something completely unique but that would still work with the original color I think that this yarn would be amazing. And Ada, if you still have another skein of Ada laying around, you can mix this in with the brown and it would work so nicely together. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I think that this project really showed that you can over dye really dark natural colors of wool. And again, I love the original color and I think that there's a lot of use for natural stunning colors of wool. However, different people have different preferences and sometimes you might want to over dye something that is natural and unique. And that is okay because it's all about you, the artist, the fiber artist, the maker, and what you want to craft with. Ada, thank you so much for sponsoring this video of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did, and I hope that I did this yarn that shares your name justice and that you are as thrilled with the results as I am. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, um, you can find a link in the video description and the iCard to the Etsy shop listing. As a sponsor, you will get multiple shout outs throughout the episode and at least 100 grams of yarn that were dyed in the video design with you in mind. If sponsorship isn't quite your thing, but you still love the yarns that I dye, uh, check out the rest of the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. There are dozens and dozens of skeins of hand dyed yarn that have been featured in my dyeing exper experiments and tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and tap that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Finally, let me know in the comments what colors would you have used when over dyeing this yarn. I cannot wait to hear what you think. Thank you so much for watching.